you need to kind of pause and say, I'm a new customer. I've never been here before. Take a big breath. And then you walk in and like, look around, Mm -hmm. feel that experience for the first time. What are you seeing? What are you smelling? What are you hearing? Welcome to the Maven Marketing Podcast. Today is Maven Monday. I'm Caleb Agee, and I'm joined by our senior strategist here at Frank and Maven, Leslie Clark. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Um, we don't have Brandon in, in the shop today, so we're holding down the fort. We're going to make it happen. Um, this is the place where we help you eliminate waste in advertising, grow your business, and achieve the big dream. And there's an old saying. It goes like this. You never get a second chance to make a good first impression. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Um, We're taking a fresh look at the impression that your company is leaving on your clients and customers. And we're calling this episode Secret Shop Your Business. Yeah, it's so important um, to get a fresh perspective and a fresh set of eyes. You just always want to leave your customers with the best first impression that you you possibly can. So we've got five different ways um, to break down how to secret shop what's going on inside your walls. Yeah, 100%. Um, It's... I think it was Tim Miles that said that every interaction with your business, like the sights, the sounds, the smells, he was like hitting every one of the senses. I probably missed some feelings. Can you have feelings with a, a textures? Yeah. I don't know. With a business. Um, every single interaction with that is affecting your brand. I think people think about brands as colors and logos and things like that. No, the brand is what they recall mm-hmm. when they think of you. The smiles they see when the, when they walk in the doors, the junk piled in the corners, the tone of voice that's used when they're greeted, um, how quickly everyone moves, the smells, the wardrobe. It's what they see, what they smell, what they hear, what they feel. Yeah. How how do your trucks look when they pull up in your in their driveway? Um what are your what are your bathrooms like? Yeah, so we're going to challenge you today to take a look at things that can easily be ignored and make a list of the things that you can do about it. Yeah. So Um, this doesn't have to be a big production. We're calling it secret shop your business, but, um, I think everybody thinks about like, oh, I have to pay like thousands of dollars for some third party company to hire people on my behalf. And I, my team won't even know about it. You could do that, but that's not what we're talking about today. Um, we're talking about doing this maybe on a little bit of a lower, a lower scale, but you will get, I think just as effective, if not more effective feedback for your company. So step number one. If you haven't done this before, you really, really, really should do it. It's map your customer flow. So typically um, you want to think about from beginning to end what your like what process your customer would come through to become a customer to go to through the sale. Give us an example. What that customer flow might look like is they see you on TV or they hear you on the radio and from there they're interested in your service so they they search you on Google. When they search you on Google, they click on your website and when they're on your website, they might submit a form and when they submit a form, you call them back. So Mm -hmm. um, what they hear on the phone whenever they call you back. That's right, yeah. Yeah, and then you have to set an appointment usually, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And then the next part of the process, we're stepping into the sales part, mm-hmm. right? Um, it kind of depends on your business. Yeah. Are you going to them? Or are they coming or to are you? Are they coming to you? Mm-hmm. What's that experience mm-hmm. like? If you're going to them, what's their what's a the truck look like? Mm-hmm. What's the installer dress like? Yeah. Or, or what's the salesman mm-hmm. or woman is dressed like? Vice versa. What do they see when they walk into your lobby or? Yeah. Yeah. So we're thinking about this process. And then even after, you know, then you, after you sell them, mm-hmm. you still have to perform the service, yeah. right? Uh-huh. So we have an install. We have um, we have maybe your, it's delivery day, you sold them a car or mm-hmm. you have, you gave them a haircut. Like they have the actual service happening. And then post-service, do you send any, what we would call yesterday customer correspondence, mm-hmm. text or email? Do you follow up with them? Yeah. And the last, the most lasting impression is the thing you actually gave them, mm-hmm. right? The car they drive around for the next two years, Yeah. right? So just take a second and map out what that customer flow looks like for you. Yeah, you could do that on paper right now. Just mm-hmm. grab a pen, flip over a sheet of paper in your notebook. One, where, where's the first place they might see us? Print piece. Mm-hmm. You know, and then two, website. Mm-hmm. Three, yours is probably going to sound very similar to what we just did. Yeah. So and that leads us to step number two. So step number two, it all starts with you. Since you're listening to this episode, um, we're putting the first responsibility on you. It doesn't matter what your position is in the company. You'll see things and you can affect them if if you really want to. Yeah. Um, so we're going to, I'm putting this in air quotes. If you're just listening to audio, we're going to shop the company in this way um, because you really can't, 
you know, do the undercover boss thing when you don't have a thousand employees. Do you remember that? Yeah. That show was that fun. That show, yeah. I love that, that show. Um, they got the new hair and the new, yeah. new nose and yeah. new wardrobe. You, you probably won't be able to pull that off. Um, but if you do, you should record it and tag us somehow and let us know that you did that because <laughs> that would be amazing. But we're going to just take a look at some of the things that you can look at with fresh eyes. Mm -hmm. um, and the way, the way I usually, I actually personally do this for our company, I'll like stop myself before I walk in the door or like when I'm coming around our parking lot, you have to kind of go in a loop around our building. Mm -hmm. I come around and like, as I get out of my car, like think about how's it look? What's it look like in the parking lot? Mm -hmm. Or walk in the door and pause and say like, okay, I'm a customer. And because normally you'll just kind of barrel in the door, walk to your office. Hey, everybody. And you're kind of get, your getting to work. Yeah. You need to kind of pause mm -hmm. and say, I'm a new customer. I've never been here before. Take a big breath. And then you walk in and like, look around, mm -hmm. feel that experience for the first time. What are you seeing? What are you smelling? What are you hearing? Yeah. Who's talking to you first? What kind of mood are they in? How are they, yeah. they presenting? What are you smelling? Is yeah. Their junk piled up. What state is the office in? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. And like walk yourself, if you have a larger office, walk yourself to where the customer goes. Mm -hmm. Like here, it's a conference room. Yeah. What's the conference room look like when I get in there? Um, how does that, how does all that feel? And I think it's really, it's really important. You're going to want to get like a note on your phone. You're going to call it secret shop mm -hmm. and you're going to start, down just thought. jot down things you notice. If you have an easy solution for it, that's fine. We're going to talk about how to arrive at the solutions later, but I think it's important to just jot down your thoughts. What are you noticing? Um, you can also do the same thing on your website, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it's good to think about what happened to that person that day that they ended up on your website that day. What questions are they asking? What hardships did they run into that day? What made them willing to take that action and come find you today? Yeah. Yeah. So again, I mean, we're going to do some breathing exercises. You're going to Type in your URL, but don't hit enter yet. Close your eyes. I found a leak in my roof today. Enter. Mm -hmm. And then what do you see? What's the first thing you're seeing? What are you noticing? Yeah. If you if you meet them on your website, addressing that leaky roof first thing, you've automatically yeah. won them over to yeah. solve their problem. That's exactly. Um, some other practical things. And I realize you may not be the boss. We We said it doesn't matter. You're going to at least observe these things. We're not going to necessarily solve them yet. We're just observing. We're tracking them down um, because there's there's two steps of a observation we're going to try to do here. So um, take a look at your trucks. Make sure like if you have a fleet, make sure they look good. They look clean. If you have installers that are third party, like what does that look like? What does your team look like when they if you have salespeople that drive around? What kind of, what do their cars look like yeah. when they pull in the parking lot, when people walk by and look in the seat, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. um, pay attention to where your team parks in your parking lot. Yeah. Do you leave room for your clients to park mm -hmm. in the front row? Oh, that one's so important. Um, I think, I think you can tell a lot about a person and an organization based on where they park. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I think wardrobe is such a big deal too. What impression are you giving mm -hmm. from the minute you walk in the door? Does yeah. your company, does your team have uniforms? Um, do they, do they all look presentable or are there wrinkles present? Um, just kind of how you're showing up yeah. to your customers in the yeah. world. Yeah. If you have like, um, I'm wearing a Frank and Maven shirt. It's an older one, but, uh, if you have like swag or like polos mm -hmm. or uniforms, um, just unifies your team immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, that may not be, that's not what we do here at Frank and Maven. Right. But like that may be what you do, um, at your place and mm -hmm. it may help, especially if like a service company where everybody kind of needs to look like they're on a team. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's solid, but make sure they all look good. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we're going to move on to step three, which is call in fresh eyes. Um, and you've taken a look and the reality is that you can only remove yourself so far from your own company. You see it every single day. This is the world that you live in and the environment that you're exposed to every single day you show up. But someone with a fresh set of eyes doesn't have that first impression that you're Yep. that you've grown normal to. Yeah. Um, so call in, call in a fresh party here. Even when you're making an extra effort, you won't see everything. Um, this doesn't have to be something big or fancy where you hire some third party. Call in a friend. Um, maybe maybe pay him to pay him a couple dollars to go in, yeah. buy him a gift card, toss him a 50, something like yeah. that, and ask him to just walk through your doors and experience your service yeah, like it, a brand new customer. It kind of depends on what you're doing or selling, mm -hmm. but you could even give them like a free product sample, yeah. uh -huh. right? Like um, 
I gave the example of haircuts, right? Give them a free haircut Mm -hmm. or, you know, um, but I think, uh, it is important to pay them for their time because they'll take it seriously and they'll do it. They'll do it well. Um, the one other caveat I'll give is like, if you have like a large ticket item, you, it's, it's probably hard to sell a roof mm-hmm. to a secret shopper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause you're going all the way through that process and they won't, um, even down to the install, they won't mm-hmm. make it to the end of your yeah. process. At the bare minimum, have them take a peek at your website, have them yeah. hop on the phone and try to schedule, um, schedule yeah. a review. Uh, well, I was going to say, even you may have a buddy who will be, or like if you're selling a car mm-hmm. or something like that, you might have a buddy who's like, Hey, it's time for me to buy a new car. You could f- forego that sale and say, Hey, I want you to do me a favor. Here's mm-hmm. what we're going to do. I'm going to give you 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. take your wife out to dinner. Uh, I'd like for you to call back at the front office and, or I want you to come to the car lot. Uh-huh. I want you to start walking around. Walk through and express and your interest. Write and... down, like make sure yeah. you take some notes, tell me what it's like. Mm-hmm. And um, you want them to, I think it's important to have them gather both good things and not so good things mm-hmm. that they notice. Yeah. Um, and the same way that you started your note, you might preface and ask them to write a note as well. Have them have them write down their thoughts and go through that same process and and keep that detailed note to pass back to you. Yeah. I think, I think it's important. Yeah. Just, just have them write, write it all down. Um, if they have ideas, I think it'd be great to hear what their ideas are. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, I think it's good. Just if they're an introvert, I'm guessing they're going to want to write it all down. Mm -hmm. If they're an extrovert, um, don't make them write it down. Call them, write Say, Hey, call me when you're done, have them call you. And then, you write it down for mm-hmm. them, right? Yeah. Um, I think it's good just to that's good advice. Too. Help help your friends out. Uh, <laughs> They're if doing you, know, you a favor if they like. Yeah, they did you a favor. Uh, asking an extrovert to write you an email is that's fair. Is maybe torture for them. So, um, add that all to your big list. Mm-hmm. You've got a big list of observations now um, because you've done some, and your secret chopper has done some. Uh, next, we're going to make a hit list, mm-hmm. and what. I hesitate to do the dangerous thing to do in this is uh, a boss could start secret shopping, t- t- could put on fresh eyes and start noticing things around their office um, and just barrel through the office like Meryl Streep in <laughs> Devil, Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Coat, stick, yeah, you know, uh, and just start like thing, thing, thing. But the danger of that is like you'll get quick results with that. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to you managers and and leaders. You'll get quick results with the like, get that, do that, Mm -hmm. get that. But you will not get lasting results with that. Um, You really want your team to get involved and be bought into this process so it's deep and lasting change and not just a quick cleanup of the the fast things that you notice. And so how do we get them invested? What we're going to do, you're going to call a meeting. Mm -hmm. You're going to bring in um, two or three interested parties, right? Mm -hmm. If it's about... Um, maybe your front of office experience, call whoever your front of office person is mm-hmm. into this meeting. Um, if it's about your sales experience, call a salesperson or multiple salespeople in. If it's about your install, call them in, right? We're going to just bring in uh, maybe a few parties and we're going to list n- your notes of your observations. Mm-hmm. Tell them what you've been up to. Yes. Yeah. Say, say, hey, I've been secret shopping. I had somebody else secret shop. Um, here's what we've noticed. Mm-hmm. And what I would encourage you to do is not give the answers to all these problems right away. So you are giving the symptom, but not the solution, not yeah. the prescription. And so you're going to say, Hey, I noticed that the front of the office feels kind of cluttered and cramped when I walk in mm-hmm. or when I go to our website, um, I'm it, left with questions. Yeah. It doesn't answer. It doesn't really tell me what's going to happen to me next, mm-hmm. or it doesn't, you know, um, lead me, it doesn't quickly show me where to go. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to take those observations Mm -hmm. and then say, what should we do about it guys? Mm -hmm. Have your team build the answer with you together. And I promise you, they will, they'll come up with probably ideas that are different and better than yours. Like Mm -hmm. be open to this, a brainstorm. There's no bad ideas. Come up with crazy ones, the ridiculously expensive ones. Mm -hmm. Don't care, right? Don't be afraid. Uh It's okay. We're going to write them all down. That brings us to point number five. Yeah. Prioritize and attack it together. Maybe start with the low-hanging fruit, the really easy things to do something about fast. And um, make them them 90-day rocks. Make them 90-day – we call them rocks, but it's 90-day goals or objectives. And put them in a realistic order to attack and take care of together. Yeah. So uh, I think when your team has that list – the other thing is like, give it, you probably shouldn't be responsible for all three of mm-hmm. your, 
you know, your list, your rocks, right? If we're calling rocks, um, what you want to do is like assign an individual, maybe mm-hmm. one for each of them, or maybe you just have one this quarter. Yeah. Give that to one person and say, Hey, you're in charge of that. Here's the resources. You have authority to pull this off, mm-hmm. knock it out. Yeah. And, um, watch them, watch them run with it. If they're a motivated person, they'll probably get it done in faster than 90 days. Mm-hmm. Depends on what it is. Right. Yeah. Um, but then you kind of want to keep that list running and come back and say, okay, next one is going to be a little harder. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's going to take us two quarters. How do we break that in half? Or the next one's a strain on the budget. Mm-hmm. Like we're going to have to redecorate. Yeah. We're going to have to buy a new couch. Uh-huh. That's a big, that's a big expense. Well, let's, let's save up for it. Let's mm-hmm. make a plan in the budget that we're going to do that. So you're going to keep coming back. So um, that is secret shopping your business. We're going to, you're going to start by mapping your customer's flow. How do they come to do business with you? And what's the process from beginning to end? Start the first impression to the very last one. And how, what do they see along the way? Mm-hmm. You're going to take it upon yourself to do it first, right? Um, and I think you need to look at it yourself with fresh eyes. Mm-hmm. Close your eyes, take that big breath. Everybody be like, what is Leslie doing on the way into work Walk today? Walk in like it's your first yeah. day. Um, what is she doing today? Um, she's secret shopping. That's what she's doing. Uh, and then three, you're going to call in some fresh eyes. Um, if you're not the boss, you may not have the power to swing like a $50 gift card around mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, but if you, and if you aren't, I would encourage you show them this episode, mm-hmm. go talk about doing it. Um, and then it's kind of fun to play secret un- yes. undercover spy sometimes. Well, we've also done that for our clients in uh-huh. the past. Um, sometimes one of us will have you kind of have to have at least a reasonable need for what they're selling, Mm -hmm. right? You can't, I don't know, like you probably wouldn't go to a barber shop Uh or I wouldn't, I don't know. Um, there, there, there has to be like at least a reasonable need. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think it's, it's a lot of fun. You've done this. I actually did this today. Yeah. Um, I had an experience today, kind of a, kind of a fun one. I actually got to get a facial today on behalf of one of my clients. And it was really fun to just break that experience down and provide my feedback on what I noticed, what I enjoyed, what I saw room for improvement on. Yeah. It's, it's so much fun. So call in those fresh eyes, um, call your marketing people, call your friends, whoever that is that you trust to give you honest feedback. Mm -hmm. Uh, You don't want like a negative Nelly coming in and just picking you apart. That's not going to be helpful or Mm -hmm. constructive. Um, But you want somebody who's going to be like, Hey, it was, it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Here's what I'm noticing. Um, They're not going to be nasty about it. And then make that hit list, prioritize an attack. Um, If you enjoyed this, I would encourage you Hit the subscribe button, rate and review. Um, give us a thumbs up, five stars, whatever that looks like, depending on the platform you're on. Um, if you have a specific question that you need answered for marketing, you can send that into Maven Monday at frankandmaven.com. We'll be here every Monday answering your marketing and advertising questions because marketers who can't teach you why are just a fancy lie. See you next time.